Texas have been disappointed. William, to William, share you're with okay. Everybody involved for me. All it's right. a reminder. I'm gonna, you, you want your mind blown again? Years. And uh, you, you guys want your mind blown again? Here when it was I, I, I gotta look. I gotta look it up real quick. What? Because and you know, so I come up with theories, that, and people uh, say uh, you're an I'm idiot. You're stealing. Gold. You steal content, man. You steal content from other people. Okay, come on. So I have that perspective. I have been saying. You know, remember when we used to hear that Dak Prescott needs all these pieces in place to work, right? That, that's what they always said. You need a you know receiver. You need the running game and Zeke Elliott to run. You need the uh, yeah, you do. Oh, you need and an I, offensive line. I give them that. I, I will I and, and, and that. I will say that this offense needs all of the above. I can look at Tony Romo and say, you know what, 2007, Marion Barber was a beast, and we had um, God, I, can't, I don't know why I can't forgetting his name, but he had the twin brother. But we had like 1,800-yard rushing attack that year, okay? That year was great. The next couple of years, not so much. And those were lean years until DeMarco Murray. 1,800 yards, Tony Romo, you know, it was with his numbers like 3,500, you know, passing yards and all that, right? And it was the catch, no catch, right? We lose Tony Romo, 2015 is ass. We get Dak, Dak, numbers like Russell Wilson. We had a rushing attack. Oh, Julius Jones, that's who it was. Julius Jones, thank you. Thank I you. I knew it was a Jones. Look, look. I knew it was a Jones. Uh, look, my man, maybe I need okay, to smoke some weed because I'd have a better memory. My man, I love weed. <laughs> He's got better memory than I do. Okay, so check this out. I started thinking because, see, I, I, I come up with theories, okay? See, I, I'm very cerebral, cerebral, even though I can't say the word. I think a lot. I think a lot. All right. Dallas Cowboys. Let, let's, let's go to the numbers. I see the numbers. Because um, this, this is another one of those things that blew my mind. I, I mean, and it's not hard to blow my mind now. It's, it's really not hard to. All right. So, Dak Prescott, Troy Aikman. Is there any comparison to them? I mean, Dak Prescott needs a running game, right? He's not a Hall of Famer like Troy Aikman, right? Right? He's not a Hall of Famer. Troy Aikman went through Super Bowl. He did. But you know what? I don't think it was but but, but let, let me go back to my original theory. The defense was actually good. Yeah. Tr- okay. But forget about not not just about the defense. Right now we're talking about this offense. This offense is predicated on being able to run the football. And here's the thing about this offense. It's the same offense basically that we're running right now. That I swear that you have to have everything together running for it to work. And it doesn't matter if you are Dak Prescott. It does not matter if you are Tony Romo. And it definitely doesn't matter if you are Troy Aikman. You will get the same results. If Troy Aikman doesn't have everything perfect, they don't win. Am I stupid? Are you saying I'm crazy? I know what you're going to say. In 1993, we won the Super Bowl, man, back to back. What are you talking about, Mark? Are you, you know, it's like, are you on crack? That's one of the Super Bowls. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. But check this out. (laughs) This team, this Dallas Cowboys team with this garbage ass offense that we are still running today has to have everything perfect because I'm going to edu- I'm going to educate you educate. because I want you to listen listen carefully now listen carefully because check out what happened with the Dallas Cowboys in that season okay in that season you'll remember we did not have what to start out the season with for two games because Jerry Jones oh Emma Smith ah do you know what happened? I, I know he you were just out. a little baby. Well, he held out. I remember. Um, oh, this is not the see. Let's see. No, I, I remember. I remember when he I held him. out. Yeah, I remember you, you talking on. about that years ago. I get the wrong page. Hold it. He did. He did held out for a couple of games. So can't do that anymore in this day and age. Without having to surrender some some money to NFL. All right, let me see. I'm sorry, I apologize. I should have I should have had this. But check this out. Okay. As we go to the box scores. 
with my theory. This is my theory, y'all. Okay. All right. My theory is when the Dallas Cowboys can't run the football, this offense won't go. It doesn't matter if you're Dak Prescott. It does not matter if you're Tony Romo. It does not matter even if you're Troy Aikman because the first two games of the season, we did not have, we did not have Zeke Elliott. I'm sorry. Well, we didn't have Zeke because Zeke would have been in. No, he wouldn't even been in diapers. We did not have <laughs> Emmett Smith. And what happened in that game was our first one was a loss to the Washington football team and a loss to the Buffalo Bills. But wait, because oh, you be acted in now. Be in but because you acted now, because look, here's the thing. Let's see. Where, let's see. Let's pull on over here a little further. Da, 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 da. We ended up rushing that first game 91 yards, under 100, lost the game. Okay. Play the second game against the Buffalo Bills. We did get over 100 yards, 103, but not real great. We lost the game. Huh. But wait, there's more. If you go down to the other games that we lost, one other one against the Cardinals, we only rushed for 48 yards. We lost. Three of the losses for the Super Bowl champion team were three games that we could not rush for 100 yards. In fact, I remember, and some of you guys that, that are old like me, because see, when you get old, there's certain things that just stick in your head. There's certain things that stick in your head. And I remember the Cowboys, they used to always say that when the Cowboys rush for 100 yards with uh, Emmett Smith, they win. When they don't, they lose. And see, we've got the stigma with Dak Prescott that, oh, well, you know, if, if they can't run the football, they're not going to win. But it's funny because everybody used to say that about the Cowboys back then. If you don't rush for 100 yards, you're not going to win. And this is this offense. Am I crazy? Oh, I know. I, I know what the Dak Prescott haters are going to say. Man, you just coming up with bullshit to defend Dak Prescott. But no, listen. We now have Troy Aikman, Hall of Famer. When the Cowboys couldn't run the football, they lost. Even years that they won the Super Bowl. We had Tony Romo. The years that he was getting the crap beat out of him and things, we could not run the football. The two years we had really good teams and a shot that should have gone all the way, but close coaching let us down, we could run the football with it. So here's the bottom line. If we're going to keep the same offense, we must find out how to run the football again. We must fix the offensive line. That's the only way it works. I remember Derek Lassick, yeah. Yeah. Can we just stop making excuses for the man? Things are not always going to be perfect around you. But see, okay, but William, William Burley, William Burley. Okay, you're missing the point of the whole picture here. It's not about Dak. It's about the offense. See, here's the thing. This offense is designed to be able to run the football. When you can run the football, it opens up everything else. The second part, the second part is it's slow developing, which means your quarterback has to be protected, okay? See, there's a difference between, if you take the San Francisco 49ers of the um, 80s and 90s, they realized Joe Montana did not have the big arm, and they didn't have a big offensive line that could open up holes. So what they did was they made it a quick striking offense. We're going to get the ball in the quarterback's hand quickly because that negates the pass rush. And instead of trying to pound the ball between the tackles because your offensive lineman can't pound the rock, I mean, they, they can't open those holes, they zone blocked. And what they did was they used the short passing game as like long handoffs, which gave guys like Roger Craig the ball in space where they could make the plays. If you go back through and you look at some of Jerry Rice's biggest touchdowns, it wasn't that he was doing, you know, a streak, you know, 80 yards down the field. More times than not, he's doing like a slant route, catching the ball in stride and making a play to the house. 
And what I'm trying to tell you is the fatal flaw with this offense. It's this offense, guys. Uh, Alexander, I've, I've watched the Kurt Russell, I mean, Kurt Warner thing. And, and part, another part of this is the design gets to be vanilla. Everybody knows what you're going to do. There is no aha surprise moment in here. It's not, it's not a great offense anymore. It's one that literally needs to be retired. The only time this offense has won Super Bowls was when everything was perfect. Cowboys had the greatest offensive line that they've ever had, the Great Wall of Dallas, which opened up holes for the Hall of Famer Emmett Smith, which made life easy for Troy Aikman, who only had to throw over 20 touchdowns one season. One season. That's it. And had playmakers all around and a great defense. I don't understand how people can't see the difference there. Gina C. What's up? Damn, Gina. Now, now let me ask you Go ahead, ask me a question. I look at the stretches back in the 